So the Forever Winter has launched into Early Access and in this video we're going to be going through if I believe it's worth playing and uh, yeah we're going to get straight into this one right now absolutely 100% this is not worth playing. The reason I say that is because I've been looking through the reviews and a lot of people are saying the devs only released this because the community were badgering them. And I've seen, I don't know how accurate this is, but I've seen it was supposed to be releasing somewhere around December 2025. Well, uh, yeah, it's September 2024. So it's about 15 months earlier than the original plan. And it's nice of the devs to release a game early, but they've shot themselves in the foot by listening to the community, if that is the case. And I say that because this game is absolutely nowhere near ready. Like, this is the earliest early access could possibly be, without it just being classed as, like, a beta test. When you get into this game, you're chucked into training, and you have to go and get a water source, like, you have to put down your water barrel, and you have to kill a few enemies. That's fair enough, it gets you into it. I will say, however, this is a third-person shooter, and from what I can tell, there is absolutely no way to switch shoulder when you're firing. And not only that, the movement in this game is incredibly janky, like stupidly janky. You can't turn at all when you're running. The movement itself is slow. And from your perspective, when you're just running around in third person to when you aim down your sights, it's not the greatest experience, especially like the crosshair. When you go to switching your perspective like over the shoulder, because that is a thing in this game. You can't shoulder switch, but you can shoot over the shoulder instead of looking down the sights. And that changes your entire perspective. And the crosshair in this game is not one that I feel comfortable using in a shooter. It's a very, very weird crosshair that would take a long time to get used to but then after your extraction from that first mission you go to the hub and this is where you have a look at your vendors you select your gear to go into a run with because this is an extraction shooter your job is to go into an area get as much loot as you can valuable loot and extract with it then do the same over and over again something like escape from tarkov but the thing is with this one the moment you go into that hub for the first time it's going to tell you that your water level is critical and water only lasts a certain amount of time, and if you don't get enough water, all of your inventory and everything in that hub will be wiped. So essentially, they've put you on a timer to get in, play the game, and get hold of some water in a run, otherwise you're going to lose everything. And with that is going to come the stress of, I need to go get some water, so you're going to risk losing stuff because you're stressed out and needing to get water. You could fail some runs if you're trying to rush through them to get some water. But you get into a run and you start moving around. For an example, I went to the, I think it was the Scorched Enclave and I started at the cemetery or something. Like, it's pretty much the default starting point. And you can set a countdown to go into the match. The most it goes up to is 10 seconds. So there's not really a lot of time for other players to join you. But you get in and like the moment I got in, there was a robot, like massive mech dude that was fighting these other enemies. And you don't know if any of them are on your team or not. So the first time I did it, I ran into the middle of the battlefield and ended up getting myself killed. Luckily, I didn't take anything from my like inventory or whatever. But then I go back in for another run. And this time, the mech got taken out. The other enemies were pretty much dead. I just had to like basically wipe out one enemy. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there's like five or six enemies that spawn right behind me. So I have absolutely no chance to survive thanks to the janky movement. And not just that, there are a massive amount of enemies compared to me. So that was yet another run failed. So I go back to the hub and I try looking for a squad to join. And the entire server list is populated with either players that are in a room on their own. Or you might get the odd server where there are two people already on it, like on that server together. Except the latency is going to be like 8,000 or 9,000 latency. So you don't want to be playing that either. So there is a lot of work, and I mean a lot of work, that needs to be done with this game. It has the potential, but whether or not the devs can sort of, like, actually use the potential of the game to its advantage and make it a really good game over time, that's the risk that's got to be taken. But, I mean, it's like to answer the question, is it worth playing? Absolutely not. Not right now, no. And I wouldn't put this down as a do not buy because the game is decent overall. Like, the concept and the premise of it is decent. But this is a game that I would definitely wait a very long time to get your hands on. And not even waiting for one or two updates. So wait a long time until there is a lot done to this game. Because it's not just the things I've mentioned. There is also the lack of optimization. I run a 4080 Super. But the game's recommended for a 3080 Ti. And even people using the higher end 30 series cards are struggling to run this 
to 60 fps so there's a lack of optimization there's jank everywhere the game's very very early access the servers and stuff don't seem to be working properly because there are so many more with stupid latency to what there are with a decent latency and not only that, there's barely any time to get anyone into your session to go into a run with other people. It's pretty much just a game you would jump on with your friends or play solo. There is the opportunity to play with random people, but the matchmaking isn't any good really. Especially because all the systems are there. It's just not giving you the opportunity through either enough time or the servers just... They have so like such a high latency you wouldn't want to even risk joining them. So yeah, if you was going to buy this one, I'd give it at least another six months to a year in the oven just to see where the devs go with it over time. But right now, as it stands, I would say it's definitely not worth playing. And what we are going to do is leave that video there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff about the Forever Winter in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.